Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kayla and it's time to crack into a good book. So today's video is going to be my next installment of these urban fantasy paranormal romance recommendations videos. And today the theme is mostly ghosts. There's also some, I guess, like necromancy that you could in include here, but generally it involves death. So such a nice topic. A lot of these have a good amount of like humor and I don't know. I mean, what is it? There's a couple that are definitely like investigating murders. So I don't know. That's something that I particularly enjoy, especially when it has this like paranormal element to it. So I'm excited to talk about these five series today. If you haven't seen one of these videos before, generally I try to categorize these based on what like the main character is at the start of a series to, you know, like avoid spoiling anything if we do learn more about a particular about that main character as the series progresses. Now, I guess before we get into this, I just want to say like, I know my, my posting has been a bit irregular lately and uh, sorry about that. It's grad school has definitely been affecting me and I just haven't really had the desire to film. I love talking about urban fantasy, so I figured that this would be a, a nice way to kind of like try to get myself back into filming normally. So anyway, so we will go ahead and get started. And a lot of these are much older series. Um, a couple are still ongoing, I think. I think three of the five have been completed. So um, the first book slash series that we'll talk about is the Grey Walker series by Kat Richardson. And the first book is called Grey Walker. So, so I believe this series is finished. There are nine books, it looks like, and the last one was published in 2014. So definitely an older series. But the first book, we follow uh, our main character, Harper, who is just like a private investigator. She was just like an average private investigator until a two-bit perp savage assault left her dead for two minutes. So this, like, once I guess she regains con consciousness, she ends up like, being able to see into the, the gray, I think is what it's called. She sees things that can only be described as weird shapes emerging from the foggy gray mist, snarling teeth, creatures roaring. She kind of thinks that she's a little bit crazy and then um, like eventually realizes that her death has like dying for two minutes or whatever um, has left her as a gray walker. So she can move between the human world and this like crossover zone is what they're calling it, where things that go bump in the night exist, and her new gift is about to drag her into that strange new realm, whether she likes it or not. So that's just a brief synopsis of the first book. So I think a lot of these books, there's generally plot points dealing with ghosts and poltergeists, and just like generally some sort of investigation element. And I believe this takes place in Seattle mostly. We've got some like creatures of ancient legend. There's some traveling. It looks like one of the books takes place in London and there's vampires as well. Um, I can't remember if there are um, like werewolves or anything like that. I seem to remember one of the books is like a haunted ship type setting. It looks like I have personally read seven out of the nine books and I don't know why I haven't finished the series because I do enjoy it. I've read some short stories set in this world as well, but um, it looks like I've given all of the main books four out of five stars. So. I, I do like this series and it's one that like I feel like I don't think about as often but like when I'm actually reading it I was like oh yeah I actually really enjoy this. I seem to remember I really enjoy these like investigations and there's a lot of really cool settings and just like murdery ritual things that she needs to investigate so I definitely do enjoy it. You know, as we go along, we learn more about her abilities to cross into this, this gray area. I seem to remember liking Harper. You know, it's this is also one that I read a long time ago. The first book came out in 2006, and I probably read it, <laughs> you know, sometime in there. Obviously, like all these books that I'm mentioning are ones that I've enjoyed and would recommend to you. So if that sounds interesting to you, like I do recommend it. I need to like actually finish the series myself <laughs> one of these days. The next series that I'll talk about is the Harper Connolly series, and this is by Charlene Harris, and she's the same author who did the Suggy Stackhouse books. The first book is called Grave Sight, and we follow Harper Connolly, and she sees dead people. So she basically can sense the final location of a person who has died and share their like last moment. And so she thinks that she is providing a service to the dead by like helping the living get closure. People don't really like her and appreciate her. So she uh, goes around with her stepbrother, who's kind of her manager and sometimes bodyguard. She's become an expert at getting in, getting paid and getting out fast because for the living, it's always urgent if even if the dead can wait forever. So there's four books in this series and it is complete as 
as far as I'm aware. I think the last book came out in 2009, so, you know, it's been a bit. As we go, we learn more about Harper's, I guess a lot of people are named Harper in these series, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but we learn more about Harper's powers and how she, like, developed them, basically. In the second book, it looks like she kind of finds two bodies or like feels two bodies in one grave. They open up the grave and like obviously her claim is correct. The other body in this grave was a missing child that Harper had tried to find a few years prior to that and then obviously like the police are really suspicious so um, Harper and her stepbrother end up trying to track down the killer themselves and then it's like the next morning a third dead body is found in the grave so lots of, lots of stuff going on here. Third book, they're hired to find a missing boy. Again, this is one that I read a while ago, so I don't like remember specifics. There's some sort of mass grave happening, Harper is attacked, and then there's like the fourth book deals more with like family secrets, I think. So I remember really enjoying this series. I do think that there is maybe like a questionable romance from what I remember. So like I guess be aware going into that. It looks like I've I gave uh, book one five stars and the rest of them four stars. So I mean that's <laughs> pretty good overall. In terms of like character development, I do you remember liking Harper? Again, it's hard for me to remember specifics. I think Tolliver, the stepbrother, was all right. But I feel like Charlene Harris's writing in general, it's kind of fluffy, I guess, and just like really easy to get into. So, and like these books are not long either, so you can definitely fly through them. The next series that I'll talk about is the Violet Eyes series by Stephen Woodworth, and the first book is called Through Violet Eyes. So this is more of a like, paranormal thriller, I think, than urban fantasy, but I was like, hell, that's close enough. Let's just throw it in here as well. <laughs> um, so this is also one that has four books, and the last book came out in 2006, so definitely an older series. I do remember reading this in middle school, so <laughs> it's a bit of it. But basically, this is set in a world where the dead can actually testify against the living if somebody is perhaps accused of murder. It's like every generation there's a few people who have these violet eyes and that like kind of denotes their ability to channel the dead. These people are very rare and they end up being like very carefully controlled um, by a society that craves their services. So, you know, it's like the, fir the most fortunate uh, increase the world's cultural heritage by channeling the still creative spirits of famous dead artists and musicians, and then the least fortunate aid the police and law courts catching criminals by interviewing deceased victims of violent crime. Um, however, in this first book, a serial murder killer is actually going after these violets, and it's like this murderer has learned how to mask his or her identity even from the victims. I think our main character is a violet who teams up with an FBI agent and they're obviously like trying to capture the serial killer. So I remember this being like really fast paced and pretty intense and dark, I think. Obviously, this Violet Society is kind of problematic and I think a lot of that really gets explored over the course of the four books. In terms of the characters, it's hard for me to remember. I generally seem to remember liking them, <laughs> so there's that. In the second book, there's like this um, this case, this the, a very high profile case where a young man is getting away with murder, and it's like the case against this person is airtight until a corrupted violet delivers a devastating testimony against another man. And so our main character kind of like gets dragged back into this case to help out. And then I think we've got more people trying to kill these violets. In the third one, it looks like. She has to go to, with an archaeologist to Peru to find a trove of priceless artifacts by channeling those who lived and died at an ancient Incan site. And so there's like a 500 year old storm of betrayal, murder, greed, and rage. And she can't silence, silence the voices of the dead. And then the last one, there's like a, a plot line about um, an attempt to manufacture violets. So we'll just leave it at that since it is the fourth book, but it looks like, again, I gave the first book five stars and the rest of them four stars. So I, I do remember the first book being like really excellent and I think the others weren't quite as compelling. I think that may just be more of a personal preference thing. Like I really enjoy books that have some sort of like murder exploration with supernatural power. So it, it kind of makes sense <laughs> that I enjoy these types of books. But yeah, just like really engaging if you're looking for this type of like let's investigate a serial killer, I would, I would definitely recommend this. 
The next series I'll talk about is the Alex Craft series, and this is by Kalena Price, and the first book is Grave Witch. So it looks like, um, th I think this is an ongoing series, and book seven is supposed to come out this year. I have read, obviously, up through book six, and it looks like, for the most part, I have given them four stars, though the sixth book, it does look like I gave it three stars. This is another one where we have this, like, being able to speak to the dead and so our main character Alex is a grave witch and so she works as a private investigator and a consultant for the police. She's investigating a high profile murder when she's attacked by the shade that she's raising and so I believe if I'm remembering this right there's kind of like this necromancy element where you can uh, raise the ghosts or like the shades or whatever and kind of interview them and see like what was like the last thing you saw before you were murdered things like that. Somebody is trying to kill her, and she ends up being saved by death. So <laughs> he is definitely present throughout the books. And then we also have this homicide detective who is supposedly hiding something and doesn't really get along with Alex all that well, but they need to team up in order to track down a killer wielding a magic so malevolent it may cost Alex her life and her soul. Now we do have a bit of a love triangle in these books from what I remember. We do have more of like serial killer plot lines as well, but we definitely get a bit of fairy as well. Maybe around the third book it starts involving these plot lines with like the Winter Queen and fairy in general and we learn more about that and how it uh, interacts I guess with this world that we're in. Some other plot points from other books, there's um, like a, a glamour inf infused drug that causes hallucinations to turn real for a while. We've got reanimated corpses, some dark magic, various magical crimes, investigation bureaus, and then like some political things, I guess, with fairy itself. So yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed the series. Alex is quite interesting. And I feel like what's really cool about this is like, it kind of explores how you can't necessarily use magic without a cost. And using this grave magic it definitely has some some unfortunate physical consequences. So we'll leave it at that. You know, in terms of the love triangle, like I don't love love triangles in general, but like this one I don't think was as irritating as it is, I think, in more like YA stuff. There's a lot of really interesting developments in terms of Alex and just her powers in general. It's a, like a really gripping series as a whole, I would say. Uh, I just really like this this whole grave magic element, I guess, and again, <laughs> more investigations of murders. I don't remember any like vampires or werewolves. I think it's mostly the fae creatures and like this necromancy and ghosts and like these this witch magic. I think she's pretty relatable and she has a lot, she actually has like a really great friend group and it's nice to see just like I guess the dynamics change over the course of the books and like how she, I don't know, I feel like she's pretty relatable and there's definitely like she's trying to, she's struggling at times to make money and like support herself and uh, I think she is in business with one of her close friends as well, so, you know, like, obviously <laughs> she would like to keep that going. She also has a dog, from what I remember. It's a really fun series. Definitely recommend it. And finally, the last series that I'll talk about is the Ghost Road series by Sean and McGuire. So this is actually, like, this t takes place within the Encrypted universe, and I love the Encrypted series overall, but you could, if you wanted to, read these as a standalone. That's totally fine. Um, right now, I think there's only two books out. So the first one is Sparrow Hill Road, and the other one is The Girl in the Green Silk Gown. And I have given these both five out of five stars. So I really love this. And um, again, I just love the Encrypted series as a whole. Our main character, Rose, does make an appearance and um, gets involved a, a bit in, in the Encrypted books. So that's always nice. The premise of Sparrow, Sparrow Hill Road is that we follow Rose, who is a ghost, and so she died in 1952 in Michigan because she was basically run off the road by a guy named Bobby Cross. So he has sold his soul to live forever and is basically trying to use her death in order to like pay the price so that he can be immortal. So obviously he is like he did not ask Rose what she thought of this idea. It's been more than 60 years since that night. She's still 16 and she's still running from Bobby Cross. So it's like they have names for her all over the country. The girl in the diner, the phantom prom date, the girl in the green silk gown, but mostly she just goes by Rose and so she's a hitchhiking ghost 
trying to find her, find a way to get her freedom and, you know, avoid Bobby Cross trying to, again, like, give her soul in exchange for his immortality. But we have a lot of, like, really interesting magic here. Like, there's, I think the crossroads comes into play and just, like, generally magic of the highways and things like that. So that's not something I see all that often, and I think it's really cool. Um, Rose herself is... I think pretty relatable you know even though she died when she was 16 she has still like lived all of all of the time and is you know not it, she doesn't read like a teenager to me i think shauna mcguire's writing is really engaging uh it's kind of like humorous i seem to remember there are like magical cars of sorts uh <laughs> so yeah there's there's a lot of really cool elements here you know in terms of shauna mcguire's books. I know that, like, you know, Middle Game and the Way We're Children series gives a lot of hype on book two, but I actually think that her Encrypted series and, like, you know, kind of as a tie-in, obviously, this Ghost Road series, those are by far my favorite of her books. I do also like the October Day series, but I think the Encrypted series and, again, like, this Ghost Road series kind of, like, takes it for me. So I would really like for people to actually read these because she has, her writing is just so great and she has a lot more to offer than just the Way We're Children series. I feel like there's more of this, like, folklore element to it and that's just really cool but yeah definitely recommend it i think of the series that i mentioned this is probably my favorite and the one that i would recommend the highest overall but like again i did enjoy all of these series so like any of the any of these books i think like in my personal opinion you can't go wrong with but this is definitely the one that i would choose if i had to recommend one so with that, those are the five book series that I have to talk to you about today. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or think you might pick them up. For your question of the day, let's say, do you enjoy uh, these sorts of murder mysteries with a paranormal element? I hope you're having an excellent day and are reading something awesome. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a big thumbs up as that would certainly help me out. But with that, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and see you in the next one.